Okay, I want to briefly say this up front. I make a number of provocative claims in this video, and if you disagree with me or you think that I'm wrong, then let me know, send me a message, we'll have a conversation privately, or we can have one publicly on YouTube. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Uh, and this, of course, is the first thing that tends to trigger white fragility, generalizing about white people. Um, as a sociologist, I'm really comfortable generalizing about white people. Um, <laughs> Social life is predictable and patterned, you know, in, in really observable ways, and we've got to grapple with those patterns. Social life is patterned in predictable and observable ways, and in this video, I'm going to grapple with one of those patterns, known as possession by ideology. I'm going to make the case, using Robin DiAngelo's own words, that the ideology she espouses is a pathological disease of the mind. And I'm also going to provide evidence that this parasitic mind virus has grafted itself onto the psyche of Robin DiAngelo, so much so that she cites her own racism as evidence of the moral virtue of the racist ideological rot that she lays out in her book, White Fragility. Now, to be fully transparent, this video is going to be somewhat personal in the degree of animosity I have towards the abject racism and idiocy that Robin DiAngelo espouses. And while I don't think that there's anything fundamentally unique about Robin DiAngelo's level of incompetence as a person and moral ineptitude, she is a perfect example of someone who is possessed by ideology, and I think a deep analysis of this phenomenon is essential to to understanding why things have gone the way they've gone over the past two years, but more importantly, how we stop ourselves from going down that path in the future. So if you're not familiar with Robin DiAngelo, I'll bring you up to speed. Robin DiAngelo holds a PhD in critical discourse analysis and whiteness studies, and she has spent the last 20 years as a corporate HR diversity consultant. Her book, White Fragility, has sold almost a million copies, and sales on it jumped about 2,000% in the aftermath of the George Floyd murder. And unlike actual quality and substantive anti-racism programs, programs like Chloe Valdery's Theory of Enchantment, which is based on the teachings of Martin Luther King and principles of social-emotional learning. Robin DiAngelo's worldview is a disgusting, narrow-minded, simplistic, ill-informed, illogical, and backwards understanding of how racism functions in the United States, and does absolutely nothing to address racism in the first place. But you should not believe that until I've provided enough evidence to convince you of that. So let's actually listen to what Robin DiAngelo has to say. Let's start with a rough outline of her position in White Fragility. I believe that white progressives cause the most daily damage to people of color. And I define a white progressive as any white person who thinks he or she is not racist, or is less racist, or is in the choir, or already gets it. This first point that Robin DiAngelo makes is actually valid. It's the same point that Martin Luther King and Malcolm X made about the white liberal, the white moderate, people who have the means and privilege and power to be able to affect change, but because of their own lack of personal responsibility, refuse to speak up or refuse to take action when they see the systems around them failing. But after a good 20 plus years of talking day in and day out to white people about racism, I feel very confident to say that there is something profoundly anti-black in this culture. And again, to be fully transparent, depending on how you define anti-blackness, I could agree with this point. It is obviously the case, if you look at any socioeconomic statistics, that there is a racial divide in this country in terms of who has opportunity and who doesn't. If the fact that race correlates with, for example, poverty or lack of educational opportunity or rates of single motherhood, then you can make the case that that system is, from a consequentialist point of view, anti-black. However, it is the next point that Robin DiAngelo makes that is going to set the tone for the rest of this video and really be the driving factor in why I am talking about this subject the way that I'm talking about it. And that nothing seems to turn white people's cranks of resentment, like thinking black people got something over on us that they didn't deserve. And, and the deeper uh, belief is that they're inherently undeserving. I believe in the, in the white mind, black people are the ultimate racial other. So if you're a white person and you have mental illness, you have anxiety, you have depression as a result of some, let's say, traumatic experience or the fact that you were disenfranchised by society, none of that is the actual source of resent you feel or the most powerful source of resent you feel. The true hatred that boils up inside of you is when you see a black person get something that you don't think they deserve. Because in your white mind, which has been conditioned and trained and taught to not see race, the black person is the ultimate racial other. And all of your negative emotions are subconsciously 
directed towards black people. This is a dehumanizing and delusional attempt on the part of Robin D'Angelo to psychologize something of which she has absolutely no understanding of and which allows her to project her racist opinions and racist beliefs that she clearly holds herself onto other people based solely on the color of their skin. Obviously, I'm getting a little upset because I talk to people about their issues, about their personal issues. I have personal issues myself, obviously. And for someone like Robin D'Angelo to spew that kind of nonsense and for that kind of nonsense to be received and propagated by corporate America and institutions across this country. I find it to be personally deeply problematic, and I think this kind of thinking, if it permeates down to your personal life, will literally prevent people from being able to address their own mental health issues. And I don't think I'm being dramatic or hyperbolic when I say that this is an ideological disease. Listen to this description of what she calls aversive racism, a subtle form of racism that, even though it's not obviously racist on the front of it, is actually deeply problematic. Aversive racism is a subtle but insidious form as aversive racists enact racism in ways that allow them to maintain a positive self-image, e.g., I have lots of friends of color, I judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. That's right, so judging people by the content of their character and not the color of their skin is actually a form of positive self-image. It's not a deeply philosophical or transformational belief system on which the entire civil rights movement was built upon. Now, in Robin DiAngelo's worldview, that is merely a aversive racist technique. So if you quote Martin Luther King, you are in fact a racist. And in case people need to be reminded that it was Martin Luther King who said this, let me remind you of the message. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. It's a shame that the U.S. education system was so racist and didn't teach us that all of those people clapping for Martin Luther King were, they themselves, racist. And let me be clear, wanting to get to a point where your skin color is as relevant as your hair color is not the same thing as saying race doesn't matter or race is not an integral part of your identity. We can recognize that there are realities about race that we cannot escape. If you are a black kid in America and you are in school learning about the history of slavery and you raise your hand to answer a question, no matter what happens, Everything you say will be interpreted through the fact that you are a black person talking about a historical reality that was unique to black people. But other than that, race doesn't really matter when it comes to the workplace or talking to someone or having common interests or believing in complex ideas. I like the Camille Foster approach to this issue, who as a black man and in Robin D'Angelo's own worldview has infinitely more authority on this subject than Robin D'Angelo ever could. This is his answer to dealing with racism or thinking about race. As a matter of principle, I value individuals. Um, so I'm, I'm good with identity. Um, I, I loathe tribalism. And when I look at race in particular, race, a phony concept that is dreamed up to divide us. Um, and I find people embracing it and holding it close to them like a sacred shroud. It, it makes me really upset. It is not who we are. You are not your appearance. It is ridiculous. Now, if that seems reasonable to you, it's probably because you're a reasonable person and you are not so intellectually arrogant enough that you've convinced yourself that somehow that belief is actually racist in and of itself. You have to be pretty possessed by a stupid belief to believe that that's racist or to claim things like young people are actually more racist nowadays than they were in the 1960s when segregation was a thing. But no, I don't actually think uh, young people today are less racist or, or, uh, because, because their, that consciousness hasn't changed their outcomes. In fact, uh, they're getting worse. Right? Okay. Okay. As if it's just a fact. Like, if you're from my generation and you grew up around people of all skin colors and you didn't really care that much what people's race was when you were hanging out with them, you are the most racist kind of person. And so it's off of an asinine statement like that that I want to make this last point about Robin D'Angelo. I use the term pathological ideology or parasitic. I regard it as a disease, and I mean that technically in the same way that I would regard alcoholism as a disease. I'm going to play a few clips, and I want you to pay attention closely to what Robin D'Angelo says and how she says it. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put it right out here. As a result of being born and raised as a white person in this culture, I have a racist worldview. I have deep racist biases. I have developed racist patterns. And I have investments in a system that has served me very well and is very comfortable for me and it really helped me get over sexism and classism that I struggle with. 
she professes her racism like profoundly, like religiously, and she puts a lot of emotional weight on it. You can actually see the relief that she gets by admitting and professing her deep, deep-seated racism. And it's actually incredibly transformative and liberating to begin from that premise. So that you can begin to think, well, how's it coming out in me? So that I might be able to stop that or ameliorate that rather than it, it's not coming out in me. Robin D'Angelo genuinely thinks that by getting up in front of the room and explaining exactly how racist she is, that that gives her credence to accuse everyone else of the same degree of racism. If an alcoholic got up in front of a room and said, well, because I'm acknowledging my alcoholism, I now am in a position to label everyone else as an alcoholic, that would be backwards. They could say, well, even though I have 10 beers a night, you drink one beer a day. It's not as much, but you still participate in the same alcoholic system. Even if you don't drink alcohol, you're an alcoholic. If you work for a company that sells alcohol, if you work for a company that does business with other companies, companies that sell alcohol. You're all part of an alcoholic system. And somehow, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, Robin D'Angelo plays a trick on her own mind. The more that she can profess her racism and the more that she can own being racist, that that is not evidence that that's a problem that's unique to her, but that is her responsibility to let everyone else know around her that they have what is fundamentally her problem. It's the definition of projection. And it's almost unreal and unimaginable the lengths that she will go to just say like look how racist i am i was in new york recently and i stepped over a homeless uh, man who was black uh on my way into whole foods and i felt shame for just a minute but then rainier cherries are in season and i i forgot all about it i, I mean i'm serious like that that's how that functions i i, I really don't think we feel that shame that much now, I've walked by plenty of homeless people of all different skin colors, and I haven't felt the degree of shame that I would feel if I hurt one of my friends or lied to somebody, because I would be overwhelmed all the time, and no human can expend that much empathy and still be functional. The problem here is that Robin D'Angelo profits off of peddling this absolute garbage ideology. And she is blinded by her own arrogance, by her own hatred for herself or other people, that she says things like this. I was taught to treat everyone the same. Anybody ever heard that one? Okay. Let me just tell you, when I hear this from a white person, uh, and I hear it frequently, <laughs> there's a bubble over my head. Uh, and it, it has a few things in it. The first thing is, oh, this person doesn't understand basic socialization. This person doesn't understand culture. Ooh, this person is not particularly self-aware. I have deep contempt for people who think they are so smart to then say, you're an idiot if you believe in common sense things that are actually right, no matter how sophisticated of a rational argument you can make saying actually race uh, is the most important thing and everything is about race and trying to not see race all the time is evidence of racism. And I know she's unserious, I know she's possessed by her belief when she does a comedy routine in the middle of her lecture. How dare you suggest my ass is showing? <laughs> and you better proceed as if it isn't. I never been to Fife, but on the way to Tacoma, I see Fife. I'm like, ooh, boy, it looks like racists live there. <laughs> and when I'm on my way up north, it's like Smoky Point. And it's so sad because she is clearly an intelligent person. And if she had spent her life, I don't know, teaching people finance, teaching kids who didn't have the privilege like me to grow up in a household where I was taught finance, I was taught budgeting, to actually go fill the gaps that actually exist, she could actually be doing real good there. But instead, her courses are being taught to companies like Coca-Cola, allegedly, who is a company that pumps sugary drinks into people and is a primary contributor to the obesity epidemic, which disproportionately affects black people. But of course, if we told that story, Robin D'Angelo wouldn't get paid. That is what I mean by possession by pathological ideology. So pay attention, it's not that hard to see and you might be possessed yourself. We're all ideological to some degree and not all ideologies are political. You can have personal ideologies, you can have beliefs about someone or something that you hold dear and won't let go of, but do not let it turn you into the kind of person who peddles this nonsense. And so with that, good luck and Godspeed.